and not necessarily those of the staff or management of KLAV. The sport of radio control racing has swept the nation, and Vegas RC Raceway is proud to present the first radio show in the nation to cover this rapidly growing sensation. So, without further delay, your host, Eric Flynn, and the Big Shane bring you Radio Control Race Chat. Hey there, I'm Eric. And I'm the Big Shane. And this is RC Race Chat. Before we get started here, remember you can call in and ask questions at 702 702- 731-1230. Also, if you're getting ready to get out of your car, you're heading into your house, you can catch us, stream us live on the Vegas RC Raceway website, which is thevrcr.com. Before we get started here, uh, this show is brought to you by uh, quite a few people, actually, the Vegas RC Raceway, myself, obviously, um, rcinsider.com. We have mychildsteacher.com, which is a great, great site real quick um, for people that have children that uh, forget their homework, that kind of stuff. This site allows you to go on to this special site and talk to your teacher in a in a personal matter where it's not it's not out of the ordinary. You can get your children's assignments, everything that needs to be done without being inappropriate, without calling their house, that kind of stuff. It's a little bit more uh, tight together than Facebook is. And it's a free service. Again, it's mychildsteacher.com. Go ahead. If you have kids that have homework in school, go ahead and check that out. Again, that is mychildsteacher.com. Also, this uh, this issue is brought to you by Bombshell Bodies. Rocco there at Bombshell. You can check him out at Facebook slash Bombshell Bodies. All right. And Shane, what have you been up to this week? Oh, I've been uh, testing that new Durango out at the track. Uh, not my not my car in particular, but everyone else's car. <laughs> and I was just hoping not to break it because I know that there's no parts available at the moment in the U.S. for it. Yeah. So I've been very, uh, very fragile with uh, playing with it. I've been very timid. Yeah. And uh, and I and I can say that this much that this this new Durango uh, Dex 210 is the new two wheel drive buggy for uh, t- for the buggy market right now. I think it's uh, one of the top cars out there and I think it's an industry changer. And Absolutely. Yeah. I think if a lot of people don't follow the footsteps of this car, I think they're every- going to be left in the dust yeah, real quickly. Yeah. It's just a whole new spectrum of uh of radio controlled what's well, precision tense yeah i mean in buggy the thing yeah. is really good it's uh it really really is you know we got in our first batch show that went to some of the customers and one guy in particular gill there that frequents the, the vegas rc raceway we sat down and i think you helped as well you know yeah. getting his car set up and to see how this thing even was box stock and then just with a couple setup changes it carries the same cornering speed and handling characteristics as the 22, but it lets you throw it around and push it like the B4. Yeah, I think I think the low C22. Uh, I've driven a number of those things in different setups with mid mid motor and rear motor and stuff like that, and uh, that car in particular is very smooth. Very, it's 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 good, but you can't really push it really hard. If you push it really hard, it will. Uh, it uh, seems to want to, yeah, it gets unsettled. It wants to roll over a little bit. It's more for the finesse driver, I believe. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just, I just feel I would that agree. Way. Yeah, it feels, it feels the same way to me. It's very, the 22 super planted. It just wants to cruise. Now, cruise very fast, albeit. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, it's good. But it's, for the guys that want to jam it into corners and that kind of stuff, might not be the car for them. It doesn't like to land on, like, one wheel being wide open. It it seems to get unsettled and wants to spin out and stuff like that. It just does weird stuff. Yeah. And the new Durango, uh, I think it's a cross between um, the B4 associated buggy and the low C22. And, yeah, and I would agree. I'm actually we're we're gonna film it tonight, and hopefully, uh, I know that I know that there's not a whole lot of video out there of the car, but I'm gonna film it tonight and uh, kind of go over some stuff with it. And then hopefully next week's show, we'll be able to have that on the internet so everybody can take a look at that video. And we'll do a product review of the DX210 De- as well. Definitely, definitely do a product review on it. Awesome. Well, uh, moving on here, a few things have been going on this week. Um, preparing for the point series, the Electric Masters at the Vegas RC Raceway. Yeah, it's, this has been a long time coming, when, and uh, everybody's been wanting it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's going to happen. Finally, we've got everything going. The flyers are out. We're just now starting to push it today. It's going to 
kick off November 12th and end on December 17th. That's going to be six races with one throwout. And if you go to one point series this year, this is going to this is going to be it. Because I think anyone that frequents the Vegas RC Raceway can tell you that when I when I do raffles, when I do giveaways, you go big. Yeah, I go big. It's <laughs> I don't want to see people leave with a bottle of tire glue. Yeah, it it, it makes me sad. So, um, you know, we got some great sponsors on board. RC Car Action on board with this That's one. That's cool. They're, they're actually going to cover the series in the magazine. That's awesome. Which is pretty neat. I'm looking forward to that, as well as the swag that they're going to give. I'm sure they got some neat hats and, and goodies and that kind of stuff. Also, J Concepts. J Concepts doing big things lately as far as their accessories go, their hauler bags, their new backpacks, that kind of stuff. So I'm sure uh, everyone that comes to the series can expect some really great stuff with that. Um, also, and you know a lot about this, is uh, BCE Chassis. Yeah, Bill. That's B- Bill at BCE, BCE Chassis. And he's coming on board with this. He's putting forward a whole new 10th scale line of stuff. That's cool. So people can look forward to uh, getting some of that stuff as, as giveaways and whatnot. Yeah, his chassis are always top notch. Um, the guy does a lot of product development and stuff like that and, and, and really knows what he's getting into with those chassis. And I think that's pretty cool that he's gotten into the tent scale market. Absolutely. Also, Thunder Power is on board with this one, the old Thunder Power. These guys make fabulous batteries, fabulous chargers. They're into the motors here. They just had a new 8th scale motor come out. So uh, them being here in Vegas, I think it's only natural for them to uh, support the Vegas RC Raceway. Yeah, that's a cool, that's a cool thing from them uh, being a local company to help out local races and stuff like that. That's pretty cool for Absolutely. them to step up and get on board. And also, the uh, the king of radios, Airtronics, they're on board with this one. Nice. Um, so talk to Craig over there at Airtronics. They know what I'm looking for so that, you know, we've kind of got some dialogue going. All I can say is this is not your average point series. Um, six races, like I said, one throwout, and there's going to be some killer, killer gifts. I'm talking about walking away when you get your plaque, getting your plaque, getting a few hundred dollars, getting a new kit, getting a new radio, and and walking away like you really put in some work. That's really cool because nobody really does that anymore. They, they give away st- like stupid stuff, like you said. I mean, tire glue and and you know maybe some tire a bands capacitor. Or yeah, yeah. You, you don't get a whole lot in these in these point series lately that I've seen. You know, especially in this town, I think that I think that now. With the handouts and stuff like that, I think the, the, it's better. It's better for the community. It's good. It's good for the companies that sponsor the event, and uh, it definitely helps out. Absolutely. And before moving on again, that is the uh, the first ever Electrics Master Series. We're gonna have buggy, awesome. short course. Short course is phenomenal out at the Vegas RC yes. Raceway. It's a ton of fun. We have a brand new layout going in for the Point Series absolutely blow your mind i guarantee there's never been a layout like this in vegas it's it's gonna be pretty cool it's gonna be killer um moving on let's see what we got here the on-road preparation we uh we did our first little bit of on-road stuff um went pretty well sunday we took the time to get everything set up um the the house was packed on sunday you couldn't get a parking spot but it was mainly for the off-road stuff yeah i I think a lot of the on-road guys came and and just checked it out what was going on and they didn't really expect anything i don't know what they expected but it wasn't uh, they didn't really uh they didn't really know what to expect yeah they didn't know they, they didn't know if they were having a race or not and and I think there was enough people there to have a race, but I just I don't know why it didn't happen. But at least now that they know that you have an on road situation going on, and uh, that's pretty cool. And I know I, I noticed most of those guys were actually inside on the off road track. Which that's was right, cool. getting guys to cross yeah, over a little bit yeah. too. So a multi purpose yeah. event there on Sundays again, on road racing at the Vegas RC Raceway every Sunday at two p.m. Um, and right now we have uh, RC Insiders Jeremy on for his segment. How you doing, Jeremy? Hey, guys, how are you doing, man? What's happening, Jeremy? What's going on, Jeremy? What's, what's going on, Shane? Hey, listen, while I got you guys on the phone, I, I want to remind you, and I'm going to hold you to this, Shane, you got to make sure we get some reports together for this point series you guys got going out in Vegas. So Definitely. We can get that stuff up there on the, on the website and stuff. Yeah, hopefully yeah. Uh, we'll be able to shoot some good video shots and, and get some of that stuff up there and get some names out for you to put on the website and, and to, to promote it. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's a good thing. Absolutely. Um, while while um, we were kind of in the midst of uh, tracking down guests for the show tonight, uh, I've got some good news to report to you, Eric. Um, I just got off the phone with Dustin Evans, and he's signed and sealed and delivered for your show on November 15th. He is stoked about doing it, and he told me he's looking forward to it if you guys would want to put him on. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Awesome. That's so, great news. So we're good to go with that. Um, 
And I also uh, got um, some word back from uh, Paul and Cody King. They are out at uh, Hot Rod Hobbies tonight. They are doing the Tuesday Night Nationals, getting ready for the finals at the JBRL there on November 12th, which we're going to be attending that as well. Yeah, I've been trying to get, prepare myself for that as well, and uh, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. It I need all new stuff, like my motors are junk and everything. So I, <laughs> it's, it's just one final race, but it's just everything's got to be right. Oh yeah, I was yeah. you know like I said I was trading some some phone calls and texts with Paul today and um, Co- Cody was actually getting taking care of a phone bill or something <laughs> while while I was trying to light him up to see if he could come on the show tonight and and out um, is it possible you know if, if he's going to be out at the uh, warm up because this weekend in in Arizona is the Nitro Challenge warm up event yes Saturday that uh, Joey's doing with uh, the Fear Farm. Um, I'm not sure if, if Joey's going to be there or not, but I would assume if it's a warm-up and he put it out on Facebook, I'm assuming he's going to be there and it's his layout. But uh, um not not sure on that. But the Fear Farm has the one-day warm-up this weekend. I really wanted to get, get out there and go to that because it's not that far away. I mean, it's just right there in Phoenix or whatever. But um, yeah. I just I couldn't do it. My family's out of town at the moment, and uh, <laughs> I re- I've, I've never been to that facility, and I've right. I heard it's pretty awesome. Um, it's always been in the nitro pit in the past, and now this this year they're changing it up a little bit and going to that fear farm. And uh, oh, wow. I just I wanted to get out there and and get to right. run on that place, but I I couldn't make it. Well, first first I want to talk a little bit about uh, the nitro or not the nitro, but the uh, the JBR Electric Series wrapped up last weekend. Okay, that was 14 classes. Team Losi gave away car kits to all 14 classes and they're going to give away another seven team losi uh radio control kits uh at the at the nitro series finale on november 12th and uh we were out there and we got some pictures and some good sidebar stories and one of the one that really kind of stuck out at me was this young man uh named zach kincaid he is seven years old and he raced the pro four class okay now listen to this he's only been driving for a year and a half and he right now drives an, an off now Hyper 10, just signed a contract with Team Durango, and he's going to start driving for them in January. Can you believe that? Wow. A seven-year-old kid That's cool. and, a and I, contract. I think he's got a, a good car behind him there. That that All the Durango stuff has been pretty good quality Well, you know stuff. what? It's, uh, it really goes to show you these parents, you know, especially the ones that come into the Vegas RC Raceway, they say, right. you know, hey, I'm interested in this. I want to pick up a, a new hobby. But Junior here is only seven or eight years old. I mean, what's he going to do? He's going to he's going to pour water on it and, and crash his matchbox cars into it. Not necessarily the case no. uh, here, huh? No, not at all. Well, these are just some of the stories that I'm that I'm getting. When, and and you know, this last weekend, I don't know if you guys have seen the the national news or whatever, but I wasn't able to make it out to uh, Jimmy's track. Uh, Occupy protests got out of control down here in San Diego, and unfortunately, I was doing live shots for CNN and the local news out here all all weekend long. They they arrested about between 50 and 75 uh, people downtown at the Civic Center, so I was kind of busy doing the network news thing over the weekend. However, my dad and my mom went up to the track out there and and uh, at Howard Hobbies and met up with Jimmy, and they they did a bunch of stuff for for my website. And my mom, who you know is a former uh, school teacher who's retired now she just started going up and talking to little kids and man they were flapping their yaps and they were just going on and giving her all this stuff and she sends me this email back with all this information and i'm just like a seven-year-old is going to race team durango and has a contract i mean that just goes to show you that like you know these companies are looking at the young kids right now i mean Definitely, that have it, the talent, it's you the know? future I mean, of of the sport, and they see that that. I mean, if the kid, if the seven year old can drive a car, you know, now, if they right. can mold or if he can mold into a certain kind of racer, then right. be unstoppable. Yeah, they, he's just going to be really good with it later on. It just you get well, better and better every. Well, time you know, time. it's. Uh, you know, kind of cutting in with our, our interview later here is these new companies that are coming around. They're, they've got their eye out for every angle because some of these established drivers might be busy. Like uh, later on in the show, we're interviewing uh, Trey Sigurd with Viper RC. Um, right. He'll be calling in a few moments. And, you know, those kind of companies, they're picking up new people. Yeah. There's a million new companies out there that are all looking. So this is a little bit outside the box. But Team Durango is still a reputable company, very reputable. Yes. And, oh, now, they're, and now they're picking up a seven-and-a-half-year-old kid. Smart. It's phenomenal. Yeah. It's absolutely phenomenal. No, it's true. And, you know, it, it, it really it makes the sport, you know, it, it, it keeps young kids not.
whatnot from just getting sucked into the video game, you know, world. I mean, you know, a couple of these other kids, you know, their their families, you know, own a couple of racetracks, one out in Palmdale, Controlled Chaos Raceway, where Cody Turner does a lot of his practicing, who drives for the website and reps the website. Um, you know, and, and if, if these kids, you know, get spotted at this young age, I mean, there's not many seven-year-olds running Pro Four out there right no. now. I don't. I, I can't. At least even here in San Diego, they're lucky if they're racing novice. I mean, and and that's the challenge I think with with this hobby and these companies is they're competing against the gamers and the and the kids that are stuck to, you know, the Macs and and then the computers and playing video games all day long. And so, you know, you got to start if you can find a seven, eight-year-old and kind of groom them all the way up and bring them through the the ranks. It's it's the way to go. Yes. Um, you know, another interesting story that came came my way. I don't know if you saw um, one of the reports I put up last week. Um, are you familiar, Shane, with Caster Racing by any chance? Very much. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard of them. I'm not very familiar with that. They're a they're a small small racing company. You know, and and the reason why I mention them, they don't get a lot of play on Neo Buggy and RCR UK and a lot of the other websites out there. You know, unless a top top name driver runs for them. And the reason why I say it. I got a couple of emails sent to me this week that were privy to a lot of the media outlets that they were trying to get their story on, and nobody picked it up but rcinsider.com. And the reason why I picked it up, and I didn't know if I was going to hurt these guys or help them when I posted it on my website, but if you followed their uh, chain through RC Tech, um, I got the email from Mike Mazza over at Caster Racing, and basically they're – their team manager, Rick Jenkins, um, ended up, he, he went out to meet the East Coast team of Castor Racing, but they didn't have funds together for him to go and do it. So everybody on the team took up a collection to get him out from Nevada all the way over to uh, North Carolina where they could hook up and meet with the East Coast team and visit with the guys. And I guess one of the uh, loyal customers of Castor Racing um, made the trip happen and donated the most of the money and, and, and got the team manager out there to meet with the East Coast side of the team. And, you know, I looked at it, you know, when I first read the email and I saw the story, which as a news guy working for a news station for a full-time job, that's a good story because it's like, hey, you've got, like, everybody pitching in to help, you know, keep this team solidly kept together and, and you know, it's it's, you know, good for... But from a business perspective, here I'm looking at, you know, the, from the com- competition side of it, you know, is that is that really good? I mean, is that showing that maybe the, the companies like on shaky grounds where they don't have some of it of a budget to get out there? And, yeah, that's a scary situation. Yeah. You know, that that really that really. And so I looked at that side of it and I and I thought to myself, you know what? Hey, I'm going to put this on my site and see if I get any feedback. And I, I didn't get any feedback. Nobody really. It wasn't important to, you know, and I feel bad because I look at this, it's like, dude, if this was any kind of a story with, like, that had, you know, a big-name driver linked to it, like a Ryan Lutz, a Jared Tebow, Cody King, any of these other guys, dude, we would have been jumping on it, and we, yeah. it would have it would have made the water cooler talk. But here I'm thinking that, like, you know, look at, look at how we stagger our news on all these websites. If it's not a big-name thing, we're not really paying attention to a story here. And yeah. I'm looking at it like, you know, God, these small companies, they're just trying to, like, you know, A, generate business, B, show some team loyal support. And, you know, I I think it was kind of cool to see, like, a a customer step up and do that. I mean, look, bottom line, let's face it, you know, we as as customers that buy our RC cars or we do, you know, like I mostly only drive team-associated equipment. So technically I feel like, hey, you know what? I, I am contributing to, you know, Brent Telke flying around on sure. the team dime, going to all these different races, yeah. you know, because we're we're going into the hobby shops or we're buying their their products online. Yeah, their products, it, their parts, their speed controls, you know, the whole deal. Yeah. But no, you're it absolutely just right. looked at the way the story was written and sent to me. It, it just made it look like, hey, these guys don't really have that kind of a budget. And, and I know a lot of the smaller teams like TQ – and Panther Tires and a lot of these other, you know, small small companies, whether they're based in Southern California, you know, or on the East Coast out in Maryland where TQ's at, who they're sort of coming out with a new platform of cars because they broke off from the 
Antsman and Team C um, situation, you know, they don't have a budget. They don't have a budget to advertise. And, and I do, I feel sorry for some of these guys because, you know, they'll email me and they'll give me their stories, but, you know, I can't just post something if I don't have a picture or a video clip. And, you know, I've turned a couple of stories away on my website not to put up because I don't have a decent, from what they want to give me news-wise, I, I can't show it, so it's I better off not showing anything, you know, until they can release something to me, you know. And I I, I want to help them because in event, eventually they'll come around and want to do something with my website. But, it, you know, I, I see that a lot of these guys do have to kind of step up. Well, and, I, think, I think if you jump into the RC car market and right. you're trying to come out with a product, you better have some money for marketing for your team, right. for promotions. promotions, for getting the name out there and getting people to like your product. Increasing to, palms. You got yeah. you got to do it. I mean, we we live in Vegas, so we know right. how it is to pay people off. That's and, right. And make no, it's true. Dude, hey, hey, you're so right. I mean, you know, you got to right make now, it happen, right. and you got to right. have the budget to do it. You're, you're exactly right. And and I, I, my website is a firm firm example of man I, I completely overblew my budget i mean i went into september i'm out of you know travel for yeah. you know x amount of races for the rest of the year and so i got together with a couple of the people that sponsor and do advertise on the website and i we work a few trades to do a few things to make a few things work yeah. for for the rest of the year that's what it'll get me done. into the first part of the first year and you know, but but you but you as the as it. the media, you knew what you were going to go attend and what you had to put out of your own pocket, and that right. that's part of your marketing and part of your strategy for the right. year. Real uh, real quick here, Jeremy, we got about thirty seconds left with you. all this information. Is wow. it's awesome, dude. <laughs> well, you you can go on. I know uh, we love having I you know. on. Go I ahead, know. real quick. Finish up what you're saying. Give everyone your website information. My website is www at rcinsider.com and real quick just to give you a heads up we are confirmed we're going to be at the j j concepts arizona state championships just confirmed this morning uh we'll be sending uh zach rogers for rcinsider.com out to arizona at srs raceway in a couple weeks for the arizona state championships cool. so awesome. look forward to attending that event and bring you some reports on uh, our website well thank you jeremy we appreciate Thanks, jeremy. it as always rc insider with a ton of information there and before we move on with our main interview here if you have any questions or anything during the show feel free to call in 702-731-1230 and if you're streaming us or you want to stream us live from the uh, internet there it's the v rcr.com and moving on we have uh trey seckard with uh, viper rc how you doing trey hey man how's it going good another day in paradise another day what are you doing tonight uh actually uh nibbling on my kids uh halloween candy I'm guilty. <laughs> yeah my uh, my daughter came into the uh, vegas rc raceway earlier she had a big uh big shopping bag full of candy i think everybody stole the candy out of her bag because it yeah. was full it was over full <laughs> We I, uh, took care of that yeah. situation. I gorged my face before we head over here, so I got the uh, you got your the sugar candy, rush. yeah, the candy jitters. But uh, moving yeah. moving right into the uh, the interview here, Trey. For uh, for those who might not be familiar with you or with Viper RC, why don't you let everyone know a little bit about yourself and your role at Viper? Sure, man. Uh, basically, I'm fairly new to Viper. Um, I started at Viper as uh, um, doing all their advertising for their design. Um, the design on their new website, and uh, basically got uh, moved into the marketing role, um, handling all the advertising throughout the entire um, org at, at Viper RC. So um, just got back from my hobby last week, uh, had a few few product releases. So I do uh, also on the testing side, um, have a lot of the four-wheel drive short course testing products, um, some of the, the eight scale that we got coming up, doing the testing side on that stuff. So kind of where quite a few hats of viper yeah i've been i've been hearing a lot of viper talk um it's it's definitely blowing up now um i know I, I know at the beginning everybody was a little iffy about viper being on the market they didn't know about the company they had no idea you know that everybody gets scared about new motors or new speed controls that are out on the market everybody wants to know how they work and the only way to do that is with people that run them and I keep hearing yeah. I keep hearing good things about Viper. Um, I know I think with the first speed controls, I didn't I don't think you guys had the timing advance going on. And then now with yeah. the new speed control, you guys do have the timing advance. Is that correct? 
Yeah, we got a, a few new updates on our firmware side that really got the uh, the boost and the timing side dialed. Uh, we just we've been testing that um, over the last three months. We have a new uh, ten scale motor line coming out too, basically for on road, uh, which is going to be uh, kind of filling that market too. So we'll have our off road ten scale and then uh, moving on to the on road one ten scale motors been a pretty big demand for that on that side definitely so. definitely yeah i've seen a lot i've seen a lot of stuff going on with with on road lately and it seems to definitely picking up steam you guys see that from an industry standpoint you see a lot of demand for on road stuff definitely uh outside of america uh, it, it seems like it's way larger but it seems like it's definitely catching on uh, it seems like you know it's as as time goes on people kind of like get burned on on uh racing off road and move back to to on road or uh, vice versa, you know that's that's kind of how it works in the hobby, you know, keeping things fresh. So, uh, but I think on road is definitely uh, the technology side is there. We got our the one one twelve one twelve scale uh, one cell speed control. So it's you know trying to push that market, trying to trying to give people exactly what they want. So now that that speed control there, that's for a pan car, correct? Is that what that speed control is for? Yeah, that's for a pan car. Anybody else that actually would, would want to run a, a one cell. Okay, right on. Well, we got we got Shane here, a big Shane. He has a question for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, sure. With with so many different electronic companies out there, what market niche did Viper RC hope to fill? Um, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's me being. I was in the RC. I've been in RC ever since the the late eighties. Uh, Grasshopper being my first car, and you know, it's like coming into this uh, this company. I see. You, uh, there were some reliability issues and some of the price ranges, um, the stuff that I had actually ran prior to me um, employed in this, you know, as, as a customer, you know, seeing these products. So I, I started going around and I started buying certain products and testing them to see which one was the best, you know, and it kind of got expensive that way. And I'd post reviews online and do that kind of stuff. And then I thought, you know what, why don't I just make this a job? And um, coming into this side, it, the niche market, I think, is for uh, – you know, in, in between the 150 to 200 dollar market, there's a there's a huge void right there for uh, for for you know like for bashers and, and without having to pay 300 350 for one of our racing systems, you know it can get pretty expensive. So we're we're trying to trying to move into the into a little bit into the basher side of the market. Yeah, and I definitely I noticed on on the website there that you have a six month warranty for motors and a yep. year warranty for all ESCs. And that's yep. pretty cool to back your that's product huge. that way. Absolutely. Most yeah, people def- most people don't back their product like that. And yeah. and you guys do. So that's pretty cool. If you have a problem, you can send it in and, and you guys would take care of it. So that's yep, that's definitely. definitely a good niche to have. Now, one thing that I just heard you say there between the, the hundred and fifty and two hundred dollar mark. So what you're what you're kinda of looking at is the person that might have bought a, a ready to run. They paid a little bit extra for the brushless ready to run. And and now that's not quite enough. The guy that might like to go out to a construction site or the skate park wants a little bit more zip, or maybe even the club racer who wants that extra edge without uh, without having to to sneak into Granny's wallet. Is that that's kind of where you're heading with that? Exactly. That's exactly you know. Coming from that standpoint is is really you know where where we're aiming for this entire market. So it's, we see it's a huge you know racing is big um, definitely in America and all over. Uh, all over the world, but, you know, it's like this basher market is also huge also. So we want to make sure that we're feeding both the racing and the basher side. Yeah, I actually, I, I personally think that there's probably more bashers out there than there are racers. You know, you got oh, the definitely. the weekend warriors out there that go out with their kids and stuff like that, and they, they're a little timid to come out and race. So they go out, yep. in, you know, parking lots, and they're in front of the house. Maybe in the even in the backyard they build a track or something like that. And uh, they don't yep. want to spend a million dollars on all their stuff. They just want it to work. Yeah, they don't. They don't necessarily know the difference. Yeah, they just know that something uh, on the wrapper says more speed, more power, yeah, yeah. seven thousand miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, you know. But it seems like Viper has really reined that in. Um, not not going super cheesy with the advertisements. You're you're just letting people know that hey, if you're looking for this this price barrier, we can take care of you and we can make sure it works. Yeah. Exactly. Now, moving on with the uh, the next question here, how does how does Viper go about attracting new users, and what special features do you guys have that separate yourselves from the other companies? Um, you know, one of the things I think that really separated us was our Pro Gauge, um, how you edit the speed controls themselves. Um, before, um, you know, it's like you'd have to unplug your receiver wire, plug it into whatever programmer box, 
know, it's like you're getting that extra wear and tear on your receiver and the plug itself. Not only that, a lot of times you have to dig to get it out of your receiver box. Uh, yeah, you start the pulling port, wires out of stuff, and I hate when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we actually designed the, the plug itself is where you plug in the actual programmer. It's on the on-off switch. It's actually a button, and we call it the V-port, and it plugs directly right into the on-off switch, so you never, ever have to pull your receiver wire. That's a pretty so cool pretty feature. Nifty. That's yeah, and it does all the editing through the uh, the pro gauge. You can edit all the timing, um, all the all the brake feature, features, all the accelerated boost, all that stuff. And you do everything on the computer or personal little. No, PC yeah, it's on the little card, card, the pro gauge. Card. Yeah. Okay. Now that that it's pro gauge there, Trey, I have a question. Does that also hook to the computer? Is there a computer interface for this stuff, or is it or is it just on your pro card? Just for the pro card. Um, that's for you know if you want. to you want to go to track, you don't want to drag your laptop there. Uh, we do have a PC link, which is uh, it's basically plugs in a USB port on your computer, and then it will plug into the V port um, on on your uh, VTX or whichever whichever Viper speed control you have. And that way, you can flash your firmware, update your firmware. And then we also have our V Link software coming out, which is um, the UI is done. We're just waiting for the the back back end actually to be coded. So we're hooking the back end to the front end. Um, so that'll be probably in the next month, month and a half, hopefully. So it's, we had a little bit of setback this last month. So. Well, that's pretty that's cool you, that you have both options because now yep. you you got the racer that sometimes I mean they're going to bring their laptop. They show up to the track. They they run the laptop with pictures and 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 yep. music and stuff for themselves. And then you have the bashers that just show up in their backyard that maybe don't want to bring out the laptop and and set all that stuff up. They could just plug in the V card and be done. Now, one exactly. thing I've noticed, like for with Castle, for example, here with their Castle Link and then their their little programming card that they have, it has some options, some basic ones on the card. But to get the yeah. really juicy stuff, you have to go to the PC. Is it is this similar with this system, or can you get to almost everything the same? You can get to everything that you can on the Pro Gauge that you can on the actual viewing software. That's cool. So everything can be done within the Pro Gauge. You don't actually need a computer. So the only thing that would be you would require the PC link was just for firmware updating. That's it. And and how often has uh, has Viper been putting out new uh, new software? New software. Uh, we just came out. We're actually we're shipped with A one nineteen. Uh, we're up to A twenty five right now. So it's A twenty three was a few months ago. So every two three months, we've actually um, stumbled on some really good uh, with this A twenty five the boosting side of the software and um, the testing tracks of. Uh, been ranting and raving about it, setting track records um, this last couple of weeks. So we're uh, we're doing a little bit more testing, and then we're going to release that to the public. Well, that's awesome. That's really really cool to hear. Uh, Shane, yeah. moving on here, what you got? Yeah, this uh, when looking at electronic industry as a whole, which items do you see selling more quickly? Items aimed at bashers or more race orientated items? That we, I mean, we've been going over yeah, this a little kinda. bit, but do you do you yeah. think the the bashers are the core what, of Viper's base? Yeah, what sells more? Um, you know, it's like honestly, it's with the our systems that we have now are pretty much racer oriented. So uh, I'm going to say that on the racer side, it's been uh, we've had a huge response, um, positive. You know, people have been loving the stuff that we've been doing, like with the um, with the VTX 10Rs, you know, and the, and the mods with the boosting. It's it's people are loving it. So it's but I'm I'm hoping that we can grab that basher market. You know, and um, I, I foresee within the next you know year, possibly two years, that uh, we'll definitely grow into that market um, a lot, a lot more as as more products are released. You know, it's, I do a lot of research online and listen to people and what they want, and you know, it's like I try to deliver that with uh, with all the Viper products. So. Now, just out of curiosity here, it, I always find this interesting from a, from a company's standpoint. You say most of your stuff is is kind of race oriented. What would you do to one of your products to make it more basher friendly? Would it just be more cooling or perhaps waterproofing it? What what deems it basher friendly to uh, to Viper? I, I see it more as a tuning option. You know, like a wider tuning window, not so uh, specific on settings for speed control. You know, with the not giving people so many options is going to confuse them. Making it user friendly, and you know, having a user friendly um, product that you know anybody can really understand, plug and play. Uh, our Basha systems all come soldered from the factory, so it has bullet plugs on it. Um, comes with Dean plugs, so you're you're set to go on that side. No soldering, which you know saves a lot of hassle. 
So you would you'd be looking at simplification and ease of use yeah. then. So yeah. nothing nothing for them to have to plug in a soldering iron, nothing for them yeah. to, to look at some numbers and some graphs and, and be like, Oh my goodness, what is this? Yeah, plug and go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even the the the, uh, the VX four the cockpit system that we have coming out um, next month is uh, that same way, the plug and play, you know, even uh, even the settings on the Pro Gauge, it comes with uh, six different settings versus the eight with the VTX. So it's got different, you know, like basher style profiles, you know, like want to blow your wheels off style. Wow, that's that's super so, neat. And uh, but, moving on here, do you do you think the recent economy has changed RC enthusiast spending habits uh, on these on these electronics and stuff, or are people still spending a little bit extra for the full featured models? Um, you know, honestly, I think people are a little more cautious. I think people are doing their research um, online you know, and trying to find out, going off people's reviews, uh, finding what people are liking, finding what's reliable, you know, and the, and the warranty and the service, you know, something that uh, I think a lot of people are looking for. So definitely I think it's, it's slowed down quite a bit everywhere, um, not only in the RC market, but, you know, it's um, definitely making a smart purchase is, is being able to provide information to people that um, – they have the, the backing, so if they buy a Viper product, that you know, like they have that warranty and that support. Well, being being a newer company, then I'd imagine that it's extremely important then, because if you're trying to build up consumer confidence, if that's the big thing with this economy, is people maybe are spending the same amount of money, but they're they're a little bit more tight with it. You really got to come out there with an awesome warranty, a, a great wrapped package. Your presentation has to be on point. Um, am, am I hitting the nail on the head with that? I mean, what are you what are you guys really yeah. doing here? Yeah, definitely. All of our uh, all of our support and any, any kind of uh, replacements are done here at our Seattle office. Uh, we're a U.S. based company, um, so anything that you send back, it's sent to Seattle. Uh, we inspect it. If it needs to be replaced, we'll just replace it here uh, and send you a new one. Turnaround time usually for a replacement is about a week. So that's not um, bad. That's that's, that's, bad that's amazing. Now that's that's from the time the person calls you and sends it in, or is that from when yep. it hits your desk? That's that's from when they call me, get it in the mail. They ship a priority. It, usually, it'll hit um, tech support um, in one day, and it'll be out that same day. Usually, Co- coming from talking from experience, uh, that's a very fast turnaround. Yeah, I own about ten different speed controls at the moment, and a couple of them have gone out recently. And it's yeah. and it's it's a slow process to get them back and to make you know ship them out and make sure you're getting them back. And sometimes they arrive yeah. and they're not they it's underneath the wrong name or it's got sent to the wrong department and then you get them back, you know, a month later yeah. or so. And then got to send them out again. And that's, <laughs> that's why I have like 10 of them. So that, well, that's, uh, that's yeah. good to know then that you guys, you guys have put such a, a large emphasis on this warranty process and, and this net now with some of your race lines here, just real quick, trying to get most bang for their buck. Are you are you leaning towards maybe something being a little bit more long lasting than powerful, or do you still just focus on performance? I mean, how does that weigh into the uh, the power output of a uh, of an item? You mean uh, are you talking about different, well, as far as wanting it control? as far as wanting it to last, um, maybe oh. a motor that's that's made to run super super duper strong, super hot wouldn't last as long. Do you guys do you guys take that into consideration? Uh, you know, it really depends on um, what the materials we're going to be using to build the motors or the actual speed controls. Um, basically, you know, it's these these items that you're putting inside of these, the motor, the rotors, the magnets, all this stuff, you know, it costs money, but it's not a huge, enormous amount of money. And, you know, it's like we've been talking about this over the last three, four months, you know, it's just like we'll just spend a little bit more in the manufacturing process, buy better materials and put them in there and charge, you know, a few more dollars, not not like 30 or 40 more dollars. You know, it's like we're not here to rape the consumer. We want to make sure that they get a quality product that's going to last. So I, I think all of our products across the board, um, when we design them and we're sending them out on the market, we expect them all to last regardless. That's awesome. That's that's really, really good to hear from a company that there's such a yeah. strong, strong outlook on that. Yeah. And uh, moving on here, Shane, what you got? Yeah, on the race circuit, Viper has had some recent luck um, with the JBRL four-wheel mod win by Andrew Smolnick and the success of JE Concepts uh, Fall Indoor Nationals. Now that yep. Viper is established, uh, do you find more and more pro drivers looking to come aboard this company? Um, you know, definitely. We're, uh, it's, 
it's funny. I at least, at least get two or three emails a day asking for sponsorship. Not necessarily pros, yeah. but it's, it's definitely uh, – uh, people are taking notice for sure. So it's, we definitely have our fair share of team drivers. I don't know what that exact number is uh, across the world, but it's, it's up there so far. We have Do quite you... a few. And East Coast and uh, the West Coast drivers have been doing great for us also. Yeah, Andrew. I know Andrew's an awesome guy. I've talked with that yeah. guy plenty of times. And uh, yep. I, I really like him. He's a pretty cool guy in the RC industry and uh, yep. definitely informative and everything like that. Um, what about other other people? Are you guys on the lookout for some other maybe pro guys that you might want to help out? Yeah, you know, it's like if, if they send up our, res- our resume, you know, we'll definitely take a look at them and see, uh, see what we can offer them. Definitely. You know? Now, do you uh, do you do active? Oh, I'm sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you there. Do you do active scouting, or do you just kind of wait for people to to come that's in? Pretty, to that's you? what I was trying to get at. Yeah, you know, not a lot of active scouting. You know, it's, we have our team managers. Uh, you know, Billy Fisher. We have a couple of pro drivers like Ryan Dunsford for, from Losey. So you know, it's like these guys are keeping their eyeballs out too. So if they see something, they'll usually um, let us know. But you know, if, if somebody wants to send over their resume, we'll definitely take a look at it. And you know, we do look at every single one. Now, when you're when you're looking again, we have a lot of people that are newer into the hobby here, newer into racing. Yeah. Um, a couple people that I can name is is little James Rashko there at the, yeah. at the track. Uh, this kid, this kid's unbelievable. He's there every day practicing at the track. He's uh, he's been racing about a year now and just recently at the battle of the beach went in and, and dominated in his classes yeah, at he's the, been blowing up i mean at the club races here he's taking guys that are sponsored and and ringing their bells um so youngsters like him i mean do you guys look for that kind of stuff what are you looking for um when you're going out or, you know when you want to sponsor someone is it just an ambassador to the hobby or are you looking for someone that can push your products and do some testing what is it exactly that you're looking for you know it's like i I personally I look for a mix of all of that. You know, it's like if you can win races, you know, that's awesome. You know, we definitely like that. But you know, like personality goes a long way with with a lot of us over here. You know, it's like we want guys who are nice. You know, we're a new company, so it's, we also want guys that are going to be educated and be able to retain that knowledge and be able to provide that knowledge. You know, across different mediums, whether it be the track, whether it be online, Facebook, however. You know, it's that's that's uh, online is huge. So it's um, being able to get get enough information out and cover that that huge online market is something big. Yeah, so and then you have your team guys giving good feedback and letting everybody exactly. know how great the product is and stuff like that. That's an awesome. Yeah, that stuff goes. Strategy. That stuff goes a long, long way. I'm sure. Word of mouth does. I mean, it's just it's yep. just good. Yep. I, if, if like let's say I was running your product and I told you know five other people that hey you might want to go look into this and and usually yeah, yeah. you know people follow you know so that's yep. uh, that's a good yeah. thing. Now and we uh, have different different levels of sponsorship throughout the the program. You know, it's like if you might not be the the pro level racer, but we do have options for guys who are a little bit lower level club racing. You know, it's definitely like, that do help out. You know, it's like like I said, it's not everybody has to be a pro driver to to become sponsored. So it's we're looking for guys. So send us your apps. Well, that's awesome. And and where might they send those apps? Do you have a, an email address for them? You can go directly on the Viper-RC website, and under the technical support information, just fill out that. That goes directly to us, and we'll, uh, we'll be able to, to get to contact with you guys that way. That's good for Very, our listeners. Yeah, absolutely awesome. I know we have a lot of guys listening that are right about getting to that point. They're ready to start uh, looking abroad for some help with some companies here, so I'm sure they'll uh, you'll be getting some emails. Yeah, it's definitely the right time of year, too. I know that, I know that uh, a lot of companies... They uh, they wait for the beginning of the year to give out a lot of different sponsorships yeah. and stuff because their yeah. marketing money's there, their promotions money is there for that. Yep. Yeah, and our new, all new contracts for this year would would start January first. So if we did pull on some new people, but we have. I mean, I just signed a, a sixteen year old local kid up here, so um, he's up up and comer also. That's very awesome. It's good to see the youngsters getting picked up. And yep. uh, and moving on here, um, talking about drivers and testing and that kind of stuff. When testing a new item, how long do your team members have before it goes to market? And what kind of uh, specific feedback are you looking for during the testing period? Um, you know, honestly, if, uh, if it gets <laughs> – it's kind of a weird thing. If it doesn't pass um, – well, there's no way it's going to go to the market. You know, it's like if I don't get a thumb, thumbs up from the test guys, uh, that we're we'll keep testing, we'll keep trying to make sure it's right. Um, that's 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 really the only way you can do it. You know, it's like you can't be close. You got to be 
pretty much 100 percent when you when you release something to the public that it works how you say it's going to work. So it's it's pretty, it's pretty difficult on the testing side. Usually, is what happens is they'll send me um, an alpha tester and I'll test it. Um, but whether it be go to the track, whether it be just out in the back in the parking lot doing speed runs, see how it runs, um, talk to the manufacturer over in Taiwan where all of our stuff is manufactured, and then we'll actually, you know, have them say, okay, this is the one we want, let's do it. So that's where all of our design and of our speed control and our motors are all done at our Taiwan factory. So when you get when you get an alpha product and you start testing it or you pass it on to a couple of your team guys to test and they say, yep. okay, there's there's an issue, this needs to be handled, um, yep. is it is it mainly um, like interface stuff, software, or is it stuff that has to be repaired mechanically? And, and regardless of what it is, do both those items have to be sent back to Taiwan for remanufacturing? Uh, no, we can actually... Just uh, as we do, we'll take a description of what the problem is, then relay it to our engineer who will um, go over the numbers, figure out exactly what the problem is, what he thinks the problem might be, and then they'll be able to turn us a new product within about 10 days. Oh, wow. And then you just start it all over again. You keep going until there's yep. nothing left to uh, nothing left to complain about, huh? Exactly. Exactly. Just the punch list. You know, it's like with the Copperhead system, it's, the motors have been solid um, on the testing side. Um, but the, the speed control, we decided we're going to add more sets into the speed control just for more reliability. Um, so that's, uh, we're two weeks out on another speed control on that side. So that's kind of how the testing works. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, it's like if we don't, don't feel it's going to work for the public, then we'll, uh, we'll send it right back and say, let's, let's start over. Wow. That's, that's neat to see that someone takes so much, so much care in that kind of stuff. And uh, moving on here, Shane, what yeah, you got? Viper seems to offer something for everybody. Uh, for those who don't know, can you explain the differences between your sensored and sensorless motors and how and speed controls, and which one is better than the other? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it really, like I said, it depends on what you're going to be doing. For racers, you know, we always say it's, um, it's better to go sensored. It's, it's definitely a smoother power. It's more consistent. Um, for somebody that's basher that's looking for – uh, a system that's really fast, has a lot of low-end torque. You know, it's like we have the four-pole sensorless system, which um, basically is uh, not as smooth as the sensored system, a um, little bit cheaper because you don't have the sensor port in there. It's also that the can's going to be a little more reliable just for the fact that it doesn't have a computer chip sensor port in there. Uh, but like you said, it's not as smooth as the sensored system would be. So with the with the censored systems, you don't get that that bottom end cog is I guess that's yeah. what you call it bottom end cog that you would with the sensorless system. Um, what other performance do the sensorless motors run cooler than the censored? Or I mean, what might someone look for? Yeah, it's you know it's an efficiency thing too. It um, it depends. Motors that usually are a little more efficient when they're running in sensorless mode, not by a lot. You know, it really once again depends on the vehicle, the track type. Um, where you're racing, all that stuff comes into play when it, it when it begs differ on those type of systems. But you know, like it's really personal preference. You know, I like the sensor systems, but I also like the sensorless ones for the some of the raw power that you can feel out of the systems is unbelievable. But we have a 5150 kV four pole 550 motor that on 2S will do 45 miles an hour. My Lozi SETE, it is just. Wow. Blow your doors off yeah, fast. Smoke the tires. It's one of those, I'm not really, you know, I don't consider myself to be one of those speed basher type people, but, you know, it's, you put that motor in there on 2S, I was found myself giggling, laugh, I mean, out behind the building laughing, just like, okay, I want to run another pack. It was fun. Oh, yeah. When when you put a you know battery motor speed control combo in something and it, it rips the asphalt up, there's uh, it's pretty exciting, that is for sure. Now, yep. now, here's a question since I just heard you say what you said there about the the sensorless motors being more efficient um, once they get going up top. Do you find yeah. that for your average person that that efficiency up top is worth the uh, compromise down low that they have with a little bit of the stuttering or cogging? Um, you know, honestly, I I don't think so. You know, my personal, you know, it's like unless you're you're up to that huge weight limit, you know, in a 2S, like on a four-wheel drive short course truck where every milliamp counts and possibly, but, you know, just for the normal $150, $160 basher system, you know, most people are just going to get um, 10 to 12 minutes out of that style of, of running. Right. Now, um, I'm not, I'm not super duper familiar with all of your line. Do you guys make yeah. a censored four pole motor? Uh, we don't. We will be after the uh, Copperhead is released. That's going to be our, our next 
uh, release. So one of the things is Roar didn't have any specs out for the actual uh, four pole 540 size class motor. So we've been waiting on Roar to actually um, get get us some specs so we can actually build that motor. That was uh, our plan was to originally to release a censored uh, with the VX4, which is not Roar approved. So that way. You know, we have a roar approved and a non roar approved version, so it's come. It'll be coming after the after we get those specs from roar. I know that these new four pole motors are definitely the t- the hot item on the market at the <laughs> yeah. moment, especially with four wheel drive short course. I mean, these things yep. they run cooler. They're they they have a lot more bottom end and top end. It seems like more power range through the whole smooth. Motor. Yeah, definitely Super smooth. smoother and just an all around good motor. Yep. Yeah. They're, uh, they really, really are something else. Yeah. Um, well, we got just a, a few more minutes with you here, uh, Trey. So in closing, where do you see Viper RC being in the next two years? And are there any other product lines that you'd like to see picked up and developed by Viper? Yeah, you know, it's like in the next couple of years, you're going to see us moving. Um, we're already in the helicopter side, but we've just uh, we've released some air products. Where we restart uh, our motors and our new air series speed control. So we'll be moving to that side. We also have a few things up our sleeve that I really can't mention, but within the next... Uh, Six to six to eight months. Um, we hopefully will be creating some more buzz, and you know, hopefully, you guys want to be calling me back to talk about it. <laughs> oh, absolutely! I've, well, I've definitely seen a lot of advertising and promotions coming from Viper. I, I've been yep. seeing them in the magazines. I've been seeing them all over the internet, and uh, yep. they definitely know their marketing strategies. It's a, it's happening for you guys, and uh, yeah. you're definitely getting on the board, so to speak. Good. Good. Yeah, you know, so we're trying. We're definitely trying hard over here. You know, like customer service wise, it's we even work weekends, so um, it's it's nonstop. If somebody has a question, they can usually email me, and I'll answer it usually within thirty minutes. Well, I know, I know from personal experiences also that some of these other companies at the moment, um, they're not, they're not, their performance level isn't quite there. Their reliability issues, stuff's breaking yeah. down, stuff's not working, stuff's catching on fire. And uh, I haven't heard that much bad things. I don't think about, I've heard one I, bad I, thing. I haven't heard anything now that I'm thinking about it about Viper's yeah. products. Not anything <laughs> bad. And uh, I don't know. You guys know a lot more what's going on and what's not going on. And you know. Yeah. But you uh, know, I will say that no product is ever perfect. You know, it's like no. there's always going to be the situation where there is something is going to happen. But you know, the, for the majority, uh, for the stuff that I've seen with my own eyes, you know, when it's set up properly, it's there's stuff. Yeah, that's that's it's neat. It's good to hear that someone has that much faith yeah. in their uh, and they have a good backing here. with their products. Absolutely, so that's, that's yeah. awesome. Now, uh, in closing here, Trey, why don't you uh, let people know about your website uh, where they can get a hold of you? Okay, viper rccom is our website. Uh, we do have a forum up too that uh, you know anybody has any questions, set up questions. We have a, a VTX um, tuning guide on there for guys that uh, just got a VTX P control and are unclear on some of the settings. So we. Uh, we pretty diligent about um, keeping that updated and making sure that we're on there helping. So any questions or anything, just pop by the website and pop me a line. Awesome. Very cool. Well, hey, thank you so much, Trey, for being, uh, being, yeah, on, our for being on our show. And I'm sure we we'll be talking it. to you soon. Have a good one. Cool. And uh, with a couple minutes left in the show here, we thought we'd let people know about what we have coming up in the uh, coming weeks here. Um, this coming up Tuesday, we're going to have Ryan Lutz on the, uh, on the show. Yes, I can't wait for that interview. I've been waiting to talk to him for a long time. Very, very exciting. You know, we've with the RC Race Chat here, we focused on the industry leaders trying to get things going as far as company, and now we're going to start delving into the uh, into the drivers. Yeah, and we, Ryan Lutz is one of the top. I would say he is the top guy to tell you about something that he did, and he will write you a book about it. And now that we got him on the internet, we, we're probably going to need a, a five-hour segment for him. <laughs> Absolutely, that is right. And we're also going to be doing the product review on the DEX 210, yes. the Team Durango. Yes. We're doing a video on that tonight. That'll be up on the Vegas RC Raceway website. You can check that out at www.thevrcr.com.
Hey, Las Vegas, Dollar Loan Center is sponsoring the Oakland Raider games this season during the broadcast on KLAV. And for every touchdown that the Raiders score during the regular season, Dollar Loan Center will donate $100 to Las Vegas' favorite charity, Opportunity Village. Join your community short-term lender, Dollar Loan Center, and make an Opportunity Village donation today. Get more information on making your donation at opportunityvillage.org or call Dollar Loan Center at 364-LOAN, and they'll help you out. Go Raiders! Hi, I'm Duke Libertori. And I'm Dr. Jan McBaron. We are a husband and wife team. And together we host the number one health talk show in the nation, Duke and the Doctor. You can hear our show weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. here on KLAV 1230 a.m. We'll discuss up-to-date health news, give away gifts, share in a laugh or two, and answer health questions from our callers. Feel happy, healthy, and terrific when you tune in to Duke and the Doctor. Monday through Friday from 6 to 8 a.m. on KLAV 1230 a.m., the talk of Las Vegas. My name is Jeffrey Burke, and I'm the host of the Staying Healthy Show here on KLAV. The Staying Healthy Show is now on KLAV 10 times per week. 10 times for you to hear the best guest in the industry and learn about the best nutritional products available for your good health. You can hear my show weekday mornings at 8 and a new show again at 5. Both shows are drive time for your listening pleasure. The show is sponsored by Stay Healthy Health Food Store, located at 840 South Rancho Drive in the Rancho Town and Country Center on the northwest corner of Charleston and Rancho. The hours of the store are Monday through Friday from 9 to 7 p.m., Saturdays 9 to 6, and closed on Sundays. Wayne Rudolph built his store with three principles in mind. Great products and selection, a knowledgeable staff, and memorable service every time you visit his store. Please tune into the Staying Healthy Show 10 times per week here on KLAV. I'm looking forward to chatting with all of you and helping you get healthy, be healthy, and stay healthy. Hello, Las Vegas. I'm Karen Steelman, president of Las Vegas Tea Party, bringing your voice to the air Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Are you tired of politics as usual? Do you want to be more involved? Do you want to put a stop to out-of-control government policies? On We the People, we will discuss the political topics of the day and find real solutions. No parties, no labels, just Americans. Be here Wednesdays at 7 p.m. with We the People, where your voice is heard. Hi, this is Vandana Chima of Exit Realty Chima Group. Join Brandon Roberts and I every Thursday at 11 a.m. on KLAV for our show, Real Estate Exposed, the Exit Realty Radio Show, where we discuss all things real estate, including foreclosures, short sales, loan modification, credit restoration, how to buy at the auction, and much, much more. Listen every Thursday at 11 a.m. to the Real Estate Exposed Show on KLAV 1230 a.m. Have you ever wanted to learn how to fly? Hi, this is Jeff Muntis with Cactus Aviation. Listen every Tuesday at 2 p.m. for a new radio show called Learning to Fly. We'll be discussing different aviation topics like how to become a pilot and flight safety in general. So whether you're curious about learning to become a pilot or interested in airplanes or just curious about the aviation industry, join me and my special guests every Tuesday at 2 p.m. for Learning to Fly on KLAV. You're cleared for takeoff. This is Robert Wagner of Wagner & Associates Tax Solutions. Join me every Tuesday at 3 p.m. for my show, What's Taxing You? on KLAV. Are you going through an audit? Haven't filed your taxes in a number of years? Or do you just owe the IRS money and want to settle? I'm Robert Wagner. Listen to my radio show, What's Taxing You? every Tuesday at 3 p.m. on KLAV. Remember, we speak tax so you don't have to. I'm Eric. And I'm Shane. Listen to Radio Controlled Race Chat every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. for all your RC-related information. From pro driver interviews to product reviews and tech tips, Radio Controlled Race Chat covers every aspect of the newest sport to sweep the nation. Catch Radio Controlled Race Chat every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. or stream us live on the Vegas RC Raceway website, www.thevrcr.com. Again, that's www.thevrcr.com. Hello, we're Los Lobos for Red. It's okay to rock and roll and party. Just let someone else do the driving. Remember, designate. A public service message brought to you by... 
Love us on radio. Like us on Facebook. And follow us on Twitter. We are KLAV 1230 AM. You're listening to KLAV Las Vegas.